One of the best parts about my job is making farm visits, interacting with farmers. And the great thing is over the course of a year, I'll do several hundred farm visits. Here in Yates County, we're home to the largest horse and buggy Mennonite settlement outside of Pennsylvania. And these people are very active in the produce and greenhouse industries. Today, we're gonna to visit with Nelson Hoover at Maple Lane Produce and Nelson grows tomatoes and a number of other crops. And today we're gonna to graft tomatoes. My name is Judson Reed. I'm a senior extension associate with the Cornell Vegetable Program. I'm in charge of a research project that we have here looking at the use of grafting in tomatoes. In the Northeast, high tunnels, these passively heated greenhouses are really growing in popularity with vegetable growers for a couple of reasons. One is we can extend the season on vegetables such as tomatoes. We can plant them earlier and we can harvest them earlier than we can in the field. There's other benefits too. We reduce diseases and we can decrease or eliminate the use of fungicides. Uh, we can improve our pest management and improve the quality of the product as well. And so as the Eat Local movement has grown, people want local produce and they want it over a longer period than they have in the past. So that creates a market opportunity for farmers. So growers are then compelled to grow tomatoes year after year to get a return on investment because they've invested in steel, they've invested in plastic. However, growing year after year is really not sustainable for the soil. And over time, certain nutrients get out of balance. Pest populations such as nematodes or different insects and diseases also increase. And so the challenge is lack of rotation and the exclusion of precipitation. On a yearly basis, I probably make over 500 farm visits throughout New York State. And I became aware of the problems that were building up in these production systems through my interaction with, with growers. Over time, we see a decreasing yield. That's the, the most important impact. So uh, certain diseases uh, such as Fusarium or Verticillium are soil-borne diseases that build up over time. And those tomatoes that are infected with those diseases will begin to wilt and will have smaller fruit and eventually will have no fruit. Then the farmer is faced with a challenge. Do they rebuild in another site? So then you have to dismantle a structure such as this and put it someplace else. Do we bring in new topsoil? Now that's a labor intensive job. Some people would be compelled to fumigate, uh, which we generally don't recommend for environmental reasons. All of these reasons have directed us towards grafting. Grafting would allow us to bring in a root stock or root system that is more resistant to those challenges whether it's nutrients, waters, or diseases. The rootstocks often come from wild tomato lines that are not domesticated for consumption. And by grafting, we can put on a fruiting variety, or what we call a cyan, onto that hardy rootstock. The top variety can be almost whatever tomato we want. It can be an heirloom, it can be a hybrid, it can be different color, it can be different shapes. So we get the best attributes of two different varieties. Grafting allows us to stay in the same soil for additional years, and it extends the profitability of the system to the farmer. We didn't invent grafting. Grafting is very well known on crops such as grapes, peaches, apples. Grafting is very common in other parts of the world. In southern Spain, 100% of the watermelon crop is thought to be grafted. In places such as Korea and Japan, grafting of cucurbit crops is over three quarters of the total field production. I think this is an opportunity for New York farmers to increase the profitability of their greenhouse or high tunnel system. It allows us to produce more tomatoes with less inputs because grafted plants have better water use efficiency, so they can make more fruit and larger fruit with less water than a non-grafted plant. In 2012, what we found was we could increase our yield in this facility by five pounds per plant. More or less, we went from 25 pounds per plant to 30 pounds per plant. Our research has shown that grafting can increase the gross revenue of a tomato operation by over $60,000 per acre. So on this side of the aisle, we have a grafted block. This is red deuce grafted onto max support. And to my right, I have an ungrafted block. So these plants are about twice the size of these plants. 
One of the concerns we have with grafting determinate tomatoes, however, is we can add too much vigor to the system and we have too many lateral shoots, or what we call suckers, which then create a very crowded canopy that leads to gray mold and other problems that decrease the fruit quality. So we're still researching this. But with the increased foliage, the plant's able to make more sugars and set more flowers and support the fruit that develops from those flowers. It also makes larger fruit because the fruit has more of a canopy to draw resources from. The, the fruit themselves are also going to be of a higher quality than the ungrafted plant because of that increased canopy provides shade, which is the ideal growing condition for the tomato fruit itself. So those fruit are going to visually be superior to the ungrafted fruit. These fruit are more exposed to the sun. They're not going to develop as nice a color and they're more susceptible to, to uh, disorders such as green shoulders or um, sun scald, which decrease the visual appearance and the marketability of that fruit. So the increased vigor has a lot of benefits for us beyond simply providing a larger plant. It provides us with more fruit and higher quality fruit as well.